All right, now that we have the single download page pretty much complete, you can add a title, add an image for your product, add a description, and we have some purchase buttons over here that take them to the shopping cart and whatever else. Before we move forward, I'm going to clean this page up a little bit. Um, on In the sidebar, I'm going to remove the price and that top purchase link, save that, and reload. So now we just have you know the different options that they have via the variable pricing and then the add to cart button. So now what we need to do is build a page to display all of our themes. So right now if you go to just slash themes, you'll notice that it's using an archives page and it lists both themes that we have in our uh, dashboard you go to all themes you notice that I just have two here it's listing them but it's on the archives page so how WordPress works is you know if you don't have a specific archives page for your custom post type in this case it would be themes then it just grabs the default archives page so what we could do is actually create an archives page for the themes and that's what we're going to do. So we can create a custom page to display our themes. So if we go to Easy Digital Downloads again, and you go to Advanced, and you go to Theming, there's this link here for a sample product grid for your theme. So click on this, and you can see here there's a, there's a uh, sample EDD starter theme, and this is what they use to display a grid of products. In our case it's going to be themes. So we can use a lot of this code in here and that's what we're going to do. Another option is to create a, uh, a template and then just have a template name at top and then you have to create that page and then select that template. If you're a member of Bootstrap WP we've done it both ways so you should know how to do that. But in this case, I'm just going to create an archives page. So if we go to our theme files, you can see here that archive.php, this is the current page that it's using. And it's similar to the other pages. It just has all this archive stuff up here. So what I'm going to do is uh, copy the page template. Um, and I'll save as and I'm going to give it a name for archives. Archive dash download save. You can see here that it saved at the top. Archives dash download. I'm going to put a tag up here just to see if it works. Call it downloads. And then reload this page here. And you can see that it is using it. Perfect. So now what we can do is create a specific template part to use. So earlier we did this for the single. And we called it content-download. Let's call this one downloads because it's going to display multiple downloads. So save that and then you can probably copy this file, save as content dash downloads. Save that. So you can actually use the same one if you want, if, you, if this is all going to be the same content. But we may change it up a little bit, so that's why I created a new one. So on our archives page, right now we have it, we're again using Bootstrap to set our columns. And I want this page to be full width. So I'm going to go ahead and just make this a 12. In Bootstrap world, that means it's going to be all 12 columns. And I also am going to remove the sidebar here. 
And because I removed that sidebar, I need to close out a couple of these divs here. So I need to close out row, and I also need to close out container. So if we save that, and then we reload again, here you go. We see that our new archives page, which is just slash themes, is full width. And it's displaying both of our themes. So instead of just listing them down the page, I want to do a little grid layout. You know, maybe three across or two across or whatever. So what we need to do is go into content dash downloads. And then we can wrap this div class equals call medium, let's just say four. Save that. In order to get that to work, we need to make sure that this is being wrapped, each one of these is being wrapped in a row. It's just how Bootstrap works. So for each one of these I'm going to wrap it in a row. Save that, reload. And you see here that I put the row in the wrong spot. That's because this is in the WordPress world what they call the WordPress loop. And anything inside the loop is going to be added to each article. So, for example, if you inspect this element, you can see here that row is being added for this top one top row, bottom row. So each one of them is being wrapped in a row. And then we open it up and it has that call medium four that I added. So what we need to do is just take this outside of the loop. Let's put it right here. Clean this back up. Save that. Now if we reload again, you see that they're being added. So pretty cool. So I want to make this look a little bit different. So I'm going to rearrange some of the content a little bit. So again, we're using content downloads. So it's pretty much the same as what we're using right now for um, content download. But let's change it up. Right now I don't want to I'm not going to display the content on this one, so I'm going to just remove this. I do want to display the post thumbnail. Instead of having the header on top though, I'm going to put it down below. Right here. So let's save that. Reload. There we go. Pretty cool. So notice none of these are clickable right now. So we can make them clickable of course. Let's go to um, post thumbnail link. And what we need to do is pretty much just add a permalink to our post thumbnails. And they'll give me an example here. Here's a good example right here. If it has the post thumbnail, add this link around it. That's exactly what we want to do. So let's grab that if statement. Put it right here. It's pretty much the same uh, if statement as we had before. But in this case, <clears throat> we're adding this anchor tag around it. So now we can get rid of this one. Save that. So this permalink is going to go to the individual uh, theme. 
So I'm going to re reload again. You can see here that these are now have links on them. If you click on it, it goes to the individual theme. It's kind of confusing because I have uh, I'm using the same thumbnail image for each one of these products, but you can see that this one doesn't have variable pricing set. And if you click on this one, it does have variable pricing set as content. But pretty easy. So as we add more themes, they're going to line up in three columns. So since I'm using Bootstrap again, I could change this column to a six. And it would be, you know, two by two all the way down the page. So we could do some cool stuff with this, like we did with the um, single download page. We could easily display the price. So for example, um, we could do something like this. They have an if statement. Let's just see what this does. Copy that. And right next to the header, put this in there. Back it up a little bit. Save that. And go back to themes. So here, you know, we have the price. It says starting at 20 bucks. This one is set to zero because when we when we created our themes, you can see that the price is set to zero. Let's go ahead and edit that. Let's make it ten dollars or something. Reload ten dollars. So you could you could add whatever you want. You know, this is a H1 tag right now, so that's why it's you know display block. That's why it's taking up the whole line. You could write some styles to have this aligned over here in a different color. You can do whatever you want. Make the title clickable just like we did for the image to go to the single page. But it's pretty straightforward. You have a, a product grid set up now and it's going to display all your different products that you have. It's pretty neat. So I'm going to end this here. I briefly went over how to set up a product grid for easy digital downloads. And in the next video, we'll move on to something different.